All right, good people from Zisakudusa TV, here we are. And I'm with Latte Lawson, who right now is running for um, um, a position uh, under the radical, radical is B, is that what they call what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Vinsa here in Denmark, and to get into the parliament in Denmark. And that's a great thing, as you can see, the man is of African descent, and that really is something great. We want to see more representation of our people here in Denmark at the moment. And um, I'm excited to have him in here because uh, of what he represents, the actual agenda that he has uh, uh, resonates with what I'm talking about. Um, the biggest thing around here is, is immigration at the moment. That's the biggest question. There's, there's no doubt about that. We know climate is big, but right now uh, immigration is, is huge. And um, the more uh, nuances fact, nuanced factors we have talking about immigration would be really good. So that is the first reason why I'd say that I'm interested to have him, just to have a little more nuance. And also to hear more from, uh, from the horse's mouth. You know, because we've got so many people talking about this issue, but what about the people who are right at the center of it? You know what I'm saying? People talk for people who are drowning in the sea and all of that. But we need to hear more from, from our perspective. Um, Latte's perspective, why I uh, resonate with it, is simply because he's looking at how do we make Africa viable for Africans so that the situation does not uh, uh, arise in the first place. And that's always been uh, my... Um, my focus and for that reason I decided that I would really uh, put my support behind this man and get him into that house so that we have at least a foothold to talk about that you know so uh, you know sometimes you have to do those things and I think this is one of those times when it's really crucial because as they say some people are talking about a paradigm shift out there but maybe the paradigm shift also includes more black faces in Parliament <laughs> so welcome <laughs> And um, I think I'll let you speak for yourself. Yeah. You know. um, yes, um, it is true my, that I'm standing for a uh, parliamentary election in, uh, in Denmark, mm -hmm. 2019. Yes. It has been a long journey. Mm -hmm. um, I started off being uh, politically active since 2004 uh, by becoming a member of the Social Liberal Party. And the Social Liberal Party is uh, known as the Radical uh, Venstra in, uh, in Denmark. One of the issues that has uh, motivated me for doing this is uh, the issue of immigration. Um, in recent years, we've experienced a lot of uh, our fellow Africans crossing the Sahara, ending up in the Mediterranean Sea to be rescued. And those who are not rescued, they probably get drawn in the sea. And then there's been a lot of uh, debate in on the European continent, and to the extent that people actually are expecting that uh, the, uh, the governments should build up, uh, uh, the, uh, the European community should put up camps around the north of Africa to uh, accommodate these uh, unwanted refugees. But the issue is not about camps, the issue is much more related to the economies of the African countries. Generally, nobody will move from his or her country if uh, conditions for survival are at, at place. Uh, what we experience with, the, of, with people trying to migrate at that heavy uh, bunch today, it's about um, the lack of um, development processes uh, that provide jobs to young people in the countries they come from. I try to use a simple uh, example which uh, everybody knows, it's not anything new. Uh, most of these African countries produce a lot of raw materials like uh, cocoa, beans and uh, coffee. But the issue is how many of these uh, cocoa beans and coffees are really processed in these uh, producing countries? Many of them are, the greater part of the produce is sent to the European countries continent and other parts of the world and where it is used to make uh, chocolates then consume in Europe and send back to some of these countries at a higher price. If we imagine that some of these raw materials are processed in the countries of uh, origin then we would probably have uh, created enough uh, processing industries that uh, would give uh, room for people acquiring jobs 
in their own countries so that people can travel because they have holidays, not because they are uh, mm -hmm. economically uh, uh, challenged, challenged uh, mm -hmm. to do that, mm -hmm. uh, risking their lives uh, for that matter. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I do now is uh, trying to get into the Danish uh, parliament and uh, one of my agenda is about immigration. Uh, immigration where we actually uh, accept that people can, imi imi uh, can immigrate if they feel like. Uh, but immigration should not be coined to the issue of uh, economic survival. Mm. Um, um, so my agenda for this process is that we should have lawful immigration processes we don't need camps in North Africa or any other part of the continent to uh, uh, to um, put up refugees or this kind of people who are trying to enter Europe. This money could just as well be sent into back into the countries so that we can start creating uh, transforming industry, primary industries that can help uh, uh, transform the raw materials in this country to finish products before it's sold on the world market. There's nobody saying that uh, this kind of investment, they can also be done by European capi uh, uh, capital or foreign capital in their countries where the raw materials are produced. So we all uh, benefit. Um, one of my major discussions is that Africa needs Europe, but Europe needs Africa. And we have to cooperate uh, together to really build Africa, not allow Africa to be exploited again in the second uh, time of uh, the existence of mankind. We've had a long history of being exploited uh, during the slavery period, and this has to stop to some extent. Uh, the population of Africa is growing, it's not stopping, and if you want to control the population, then the best thing to do is to get, make sure that people become well-to-do. When people are well-to-do, the natural process is that you spend more time on yourself and it's not the question of uh, producing more children that becomes your priorities. And this is not anything new. We have seen on the European continent and many areas of the developed countries that this is the process, you know. So Africa needs a lot of investment, investment in processing their own produce before it is being sold to the uh, world market. That's one of my um, major issues I want to carry into the parliament in uh, Denmark. Then you can ask me, why do I think I can do something about this issue in the Danish parliament? Oh, of course, it is very important that uh, the Danish government uh, speak on our behalf in EU, uh, the European Union, and it's easier to have a government or the whole country speaking on your behalf than an individual who is uh, sitting in the parliament in, uh, in the European Commission to do that. So that is the challenge we have. I have to uh, do things uh, from different angles. I have to meet my Danish counterparts, talk about the African problem. I have to tell, meet my Africans and tell them, hey, we have a problem, so we need to go together to do it. And then um, I also have to meet uh, with our African dynamic leaders of the world, in the world, to in indicate that we have a problem which we need to solve together. It is not only the Europeans who can uh, make the issue uh, better for us, but we also have to re remember that the countries, the African governments rule, are made up of people people who want progress in their lives, and that is the agenda. When I come back to Denmark, I want to see a place where we live in a multiracial society, where the stronger ones uh, take good care of the younger, uh, the less unfortunate ones, and that's also one of my goals. And internally in Denmark, I try to work hard in the area of uh, um, uh, children, young people, and education, because I think this issues are very important not uh, for every child including the danish children as we know uh, without the basic education without a strong uh, knowledge of education it is very difficult to get people to have a, a clear-cut picture of the world and where we are going and where we should avoid not to make the mistakes of the past okay um i there are a lot of issues there which i find myself um 
we could go deeper in. Um, yeah. The um, do you do you think that um, if there was a kind of mechanism that allowed Africans to come and work for for a certain period and then go home? I think there are certain things like that in the Middle East, and I believe Argentinians are able to come to Denmark for uh, a year working holiday. Those type of mechanisms, do you think it make it much easier? I mean, for for Africans. Uh, rather than it being a, a sell all for a future and uh, risk everything for a non ending future in Europe, which actually ends up being in a, in, in a camp? Yeah. Actually, I don't know of the Argentina example, uh, but the, what I can say is that um, it is also, an, it is always an advantageous. Uh, issue if we allow people to learn themselves from where knowledge exists. It is also clear that uh, the Africans who come here, many of them actually have the intention of working for some time, getting some money and going back to their countries. To that is the mindset, them. isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's mean, the so mindset they come so with. So in, 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 yeah. in that instance, mm. what I'm looking for is the nuance. Mm that you hear, for example, when the man Paludan is talking, yeah. he talks about, okay, people are going to be sent home, whatever, blah, blah, this and that. Mm. And then he goes through all the foreigners who live in Denmark, and he includes the Africans as well. Mm. What I'm trying to get through here is that, uh, unlike yeah. others, <laughs> our wish is to be in Africa. Yeah. Our, um, regardless, I mean, uh, it, it, if we could make Africa work, we would stay in Africa. Yeah. Yeah. And our wish is not to stay here. But, but to actually make it in Africa. Yeah. Is, is that a, gen, a generalization? Yeah, it's very difficult to know whether it's a generalization, <laughs> but I think uh, mon many people generally, when they leave the African continent, they do with the mindset of coming back sometime one day to establish themselves. Africa is a beautiful c continent, and the possibilities are there. What we lack is the management of the possibilities to mm. allow the African people to grow on the African continent and and develop them their own processes. Mm. Uh, the whole issue is a complex one, but I don't want to focus on complex issue. I don't want to think of it as a complex issue. That is why I say these simple things like uh, we need a lot of investment on Africa. These investments should target the raw the raw materials we produce. Mm. By doing that, we get the Africans to live on the continent, and in that way. Um, 